In this video, we're going to be answering questions that you may have about what is going on at this table. Questions like, are these grown men playing with toy soldiers? Yes. Yes, they are. Are they playing an actual game with actual rules, or are they just moving toy soldiers around and making gun noises? Yes and yes. Could I aspire to such historically accurate facial hair? Maybe. <laughs> In the next few minutes, we're going to give you a primer on war games, where they started, how they were developed, and we're also going to show you why miniatures war games are better than board games or video games. As a civilian hobby, miniature wargaming became popular in 1913 with the publication of Little Wars by the novelist H.G. Wells. His book offered a simple set of rules for playing with toy soldiers. Little Wars sparked widespread public interest in a hobby that had previously been confined to professional military circles. Wells certainly didn't invent the idea of a war game. Games of strategy such as chess, checkers, backgammon, or Chinese Go date back well before 1000 BC. However, the idea of trying to simulate modern combat on a table is much more recent. A Prussian staff officer named von Reiswitz created a set of rules which became known as Kriegspiel. This revolutionary game had rules for map movement, fog of war, and limited communication. It was adopted by the Prussian general staff as a training tool, and Prussian officers would later claim their brilliant victory in the 1870 Franco-Prussian War had been thoroughly playtested with the use of Kriegspiel. It didn't take long for other militaries and war colleges to adopt wargaming as a simulation and training tool, but it was H.G. Wells in 1913 who created the division between war games as a military training tool and war games as recreation and fun for civilians. That ushered in an explosion of mass market war games from companies like SPI and Avalon Hill, but around here we still love the old-fashioned miniatures tabletop wargaming. H.G. Wells and his friends used to play games like this on the floor, dressed in suits. It was a gentleman's pursuit. We don't wear suits, and only one of us qualifies as a gentleman, but not much has changed since 1913. Part of the fun in this hobby is researching, assembling, and painting historical armies. We also craft terrain to fill the tabletop, and there are written rules to govern how the game is played. One thing that has changed since 1913 is that H.G. Wells is no longer the only author out there. There are hundreds of rule sets that you can either purchase or even get for free. And with these, you can game any period of history, any conflict, or any genre that you feel like. Some rules are simple with just a few pages, while others may be complex with over 100 pages of detail. Fundamentally, any set of wargaming rules tells players how far they can move their troops, how to roll dice to conduct combat, and how to simulate the morale and staying power of your miniature army. So that's it. That's what we're trying to do at this table. We're trying to outwit each other in this historical battle using toy soldiers. And while I do like a good board game, maybe even a video game, the thing about miniature gaming is that it incorporates so many other hobbies. Before you set up a game like this, you get to paint the miniatures, build these buildings, research a historical battle, and then after all of that, you sit down with your friends face to face and try to beat the living hell out of them. Well, maybe now that you know what miniature wargaming is, you should stick around, subscribe to Little Wars TV, and watch us screw up history as best we can. <laughs> it's <laughs> on you now. Oh, my bad. Did I, you get that? <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. He's <laughs> fighting bullets over here. <laughs> hey. Take 47. <laughs> In this video, we are going to answer any questions you may have. Nailed it! We don't need another thing.